I use the restroom. You may use the restroom. Okay. So again, we're looking at number three. I'm not thrilled with how this is recording these days. As good as that's gonna get. <laughs> you okay? All right. Are you still working or are you ready for me to jump in? That is, you're still working. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so again, you're looking at number three, and I will jump in on the graphing of it. Um, you're welcome to use your calculator for this. We know it's a parabola, we know it's is it upward facing or downward facing? Yeah. Downward facing, and we know it goes through where on the y-axis? Three. Three, very good, okay. One, two, three. And I think I mentioned this to you guys, but remember that um, parabolas quadratics have the pattern of like over one and then up or down one, over one, up or down three, over one, up or down five. I think we talked about that the other day. If not, you might have talked about it in Algebra 2. If not, it doesn't truly affect much of this. What's going to happen, though, is it, it's not going to give us a um, exact zero. So in a minute, I'm going to ask us to find zeros, and we're going to have to go grab this on the calculator to find its exact zeros. So it's going to look something like this. Oh, thanks, Max. Interaction. Will all concert choir members please head to the rack to prepare for math? All concert choir members, report to the rack to prepare for math. Thank you. All right. Since you've already started this, catch me up. Is this continuous? Yes. 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 Is it? Where is it? Um, increasing. Increasing from negative Good. Okay. Stop. 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 Um, it's increasing from the very beginning all the way to zero on the x axis. I only care about my zeros here. So um, you might be tempted to say, oh, well, it's increasing from negative infinity to three. No, I only care about my x's. So I'm going to be increasing from negative infinity to zero, and then I'm going to be decreasing the rest of the way, right? So from zero to <laughs> plus you, positive infinity. All right, boundedness. Is this bounded above, below, at all, neither? above bounded remember means that there's a ceiling that we never go above or there's a floor we can never go below so i think is there like a bound of some kind that i will never ever cross in this case there's a bound above so it is bounded okay. what about asymptotes are there any asymptotes in a parabola <coughs> no what about max or min do we have any maxes or mins here yeah, so max at zero, three. Good, max at zero, three. Is there any symmetry in this graph? Um, we would say, I just went yes or no. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I've got domain range and zero. So what would my domain be here? Yes, Ava? Good. Andrew, do you know my range? Um, it would be negative infinity to Mm -hmm. Because there's a point at three, so I do want to bracket at three. So my domain was negative infinity to positive infinity, and my range is negative infinity to positive three, and I have a bracket there. Now for our zeros, we can go jump to our calculator and practice finding the zeros there. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I really want to spend time on that in class, so you can check it on your own, but it is a positive 1.7 and negative 1.7. Are we okay that I'm not spending time on that class? Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's a skill we've, we've mastered at this point. Just what? What's that? What's an asymptote again? Good. An asymptote is the like dotted line, bop, 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 bop. Um, and it's a line that we approach, but we never can cross. So if I have a vertical asymptote, I might get closer and closer and closer and closer to it, but I never ever cross it. Um, it's one of those things that sometimes you just have to know when there is one and when there's not one. I, I hate making math like a memorization thing, but I think asymptotes are a little bit of a memorization thing. 
Let's actually skip and let's do some asymptotes now. So I want you to skip. I'm so sorry I'm skipping around so much in this note sheet. But let's skip to number nine. I actually believe this is something that you guys have done. So I think this will be a nice little review right now. We did do that. Skip to number nine. It says find all asymptotes. Does everybody see that? Does anyone know what kind of graph this is when it's a fraction? Remember what the name of this graph is when it's a fraction? Zach? Yeah, reciprocal. Mm -hmm. A reciprocal, reciprocal graph. I also call them rational functions because a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. So a function that can be written as a fraction is also rational. So those are reciprocal, rational, whatever you want to call them. Um, I believe you guys le uh, learned about this in Algebra 2. On all of these, we're going to check for a vertical asymptote and we're going to check for a horizontal asymptote. Now, this might be silly, but do this with me. I want you to hold your arm up and I want it to be vertical. Hold your arm vertically. Good. Can you hold your arm horizontally? Very good. It's so silly, but every year we forget which one's vertical and which one's horizontal. Okay, so vertical is going up and down, horizontal is going left and right. And so we are going to find and remember the rules for all of these. So I'm going to essentially make two little columns just so I can kind of keep my work straight. There is not a ton of work here, but we're going to do our VAs, our vertical asymptotes, and our HAs, our horizontal asymptotes. This might be a shot in the dark, but do any of you remember how to find a vertical asymptote? Zach? Um, the denominator equal to zero. Very good. So where the denominator equals zero is going to be my vertical asymptote. So I'm going to write that off to the side. I'm going to say VA, we set denom equal to zero. So we set the denominator equal to zero. The denominator is not allowed to equal zero. So if any number makes it equal to zero, we will have no points there, thus an asymptote. So I want us to go through now. I want us to set all the denominators equal to zero and solve. You have a question? Oh, no. Okay. Do you think you're ready to do that on your own for a second? Okay, take like a minute or two, try and do as many as you can. If you find an issue, put like a little star, move on to the next one, because we're going to talk about all of them. Find just vertical asymptote on all of those. like Miss White, I've slept since last time I saw vertical asymptotes. Let me help you out. Set it equal to zero. So I'm just going to do x plus one equals zero minus one from both sides. X equals negative one. You don't even need that much work. Finish up the one you're on. All right, join me. What's my asymptote for letter B? X equals negative three. Very good, Quinn. What's my asymptote for letter C? Zero. Not zero. None. Not one. None. Why is it none, Michael? Um, yes, so my denominator here is one, and if you set your denominator equal to zero, that's not a true statement. There's nothing that I can plug in to make my denominator equal to zero. So if it, there's no fraction, there is no vertical asymptote. All right, what about letter D? Um, X squared plus one. It's kind of a trick question. So if we set that equal to zero, that would give us x equals positive or negative i. Can I go put on my graph where positive or negative i is? No. no, it's an imaginary number. Anytime you have an x squared plus something in the denominator, there is no number ever that you can plug in to make your denominator equal zero. So there's none here as well. What, so what would that make answer for letter E? Also none. Also none. Letter F is negative three. And then G, you probably have to factor. What did you get it in factored form? X plus or minus what? 
X minus four, X minus one. So my asymptotes are at one and four. Thank you, good job. All right, was that a nice little review? Or if it wasn't, that makes a lot of sense, right? That's not too hard. Okay. Now, horizontal asymptotes. We can get in the weeds a little bit more on this, but, um, okay, sorry, I thought you had a question. I did, but I figured it out. Oh, you did? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, no, I got the answer. Okay. So horizontal asymptote, there are three cases. So horizontal asymptote can have one of two things. It always depends on the exponents. And I have to look at the top and the bottom and compare them. If the exponents are the same on top and bottom, so if I have the biggest exponent is one on top and the biggest exponent is a one on the bottom, does anyone remember how I would find the vertical asymptote there? Zach? Uh, would that would just be it would, we'd look at the coefficients out here and we'd make a fraction of the coefficients. So if they are the same, then we have a fraction of the coefficients. So that's case number one. So one option is they're the same. Another option is the one on top is smaller than the one on bottom. So let's say it's like a one over X. This one is another one of those memorized things. You just know what you don't, you can't really reason your way through it. No matter what the exponent is, no matter what the constants are, this is always y <coughs> equals zero. So if the exponent on bottom is bigger, then the asymptote is just at y equals zero. And the last option is if the exponent on top is bigger than the one on bottom. And we are really not gonna do those right now. That's what we call a slant asymptote, and we will need to do long or synthetic division in order to solve that. So we're gonna save that for chapter two, which is our polynomials chapter, and we'll do long and synthetic division then, okay? So if you get a bigger exponent on top than on bottom, you can just write slant asymptote, and we'll practice those later, okay? So let's do these actually together, okay? If I look at my first one, my x on top and I have an x on bottom, those are the same. So what's my horizontal asymptote here? One, very good. And when we write horizontal asymptotes, we do y equals. Horizontals are y equals, <laughs> verticals are x equals. So you need not worry about the plus one. You know the plus one doesn't matter. Great question. What's my horizontal asymptote for letter B? Two. two. I've got two over one, so y equals two. What about for C? Zero. Not zero. Not one. Not a slam. Are there any x's in the denominator? No. If I just look at this really basically, what graph is this? It's a quadratic. Do quadratics have any asymptotes? No. No. I'm just keeping you on your toes. There's none here. All right. Letter D is the first time where I have um, a bigger exponent on the bottom. What was our rule when the exponent's bigger on the bottom? Zero. zero. Very good. Y equals zero. All right. E, what's my asymptote at E? One, very good. I know they're x squares now, but that doesn't matter. All I care is their coefficient. Y equals one. What about F? That's a slant, good. Because I've got x squared over x. We'll just write slant for now and we'll worry about that another year, another chapter. And what about G? One, very good. All right, excellent job. Let's jump back in our notes. Let's go back to number four. Number four says even and odd. Oh yes, Billy. Yes, you know. Number four says even or odd, and that is dealing with our symmetry. Now we were able to look at the symmetry on the graph and determine whether it was even or odd, right? It's even symmetry if it's reflective over my y-axis. So if I have like this parabola, if I were to fold it down 
the y axis, it should be the same on both sides, right? So that's a visual representation of an even graph. Not with me if you're like, yeah, I remember doing that. Yeah, Sophia. Is symmetry the same thing as like end behavior? It is not the same thing, but we do like to use even and odd in them, okay. which I know gets confusing. And again, I think we will not really talk about that until chapter two, but end behavior for polynomials, we will say a graph is like positive even or negative odd. And th those are important words then. Now, my odd symmetry is where we are reflective over the origin. And I was telling you kind of colloquially or like in a very basic term, that means that it's in the first and the third quadrant. If it looks like it's just the same in the first and the third quadrant, that's what we consider an odd graph. So we've looked at it on graphs and you were able to tell me even or odd and we've been looking at our um, BFF graphs and we're knowing which ones are even and odd. Now, that being said, I want to be able to do it algebraically. So I'm going to write a very mathy definition, but we're going to break it down, okay? So the even definition says for all x's, f of negative x is equal to f of x. What that means is if I plug negative x into my expression, into my equation, and I simplify it as much as possible, I should get the same thing I started with. Okay, let me do a quick example of that. An example would be like if I had 3x squared. What if I plugged a negative x in for my x? So let's make that negative x. What'd you say, Quinn? I'm still gonna get the same thing, why? Good, when you square anything, it goes, it stays positive. So when I square this negative X, it becomes positive X squared. So it's the exact same thing as what I started with. So that's why it's an even graph. And remember, even is symmetric about the Y axis. And so that makes sense. The X's, um, whether it's a negative X or a positive X, they correspond with the same Y. So that's why that works that way. We'll do a few more examples momentarily. So just kind of stick with me. Now, odd says, the mathy definition says, for all X's, <clears throat> F of negative X is equal to negative F of X. What that means is that we, if we have a negative X involved, all of the um, signs would change to be negative. They would all be opposite of what we started with. So let's say we had an example of like three X to the third. If I plug in negative X for my X, if I do three negative X to the third, Will negative x to the third be a positive number or a negative number? Negative. negative. So that will become negative 3x to the third. That is not the exact same thing as what we started with. The one thing that's different is I have a negative now where I didn't have a negative. So that's the same thing as being negative f of x. So every single sign will switch from positive to negative or from negative to positive. That is what we call the symmetric, and I know I've already said this, but I'll write it, about the origin. So essentially positive x's and positive y's match up with negative x's and negative y's. Yep. And because we love to switch around, as soon as we're done with this, I think we're gonna go to number seven. I think it says even odd or number eight. Number eight says either odd or neither. We're gonna do this in practice. So we just talked about it. Now let's actually do it on our paper. Okay. So on all of these, again, it's talking about symmetry. And I'm gonna plug what into every single one of these. But I just tell you that we plugged in to, to solve negative x. Plug in negative x to all of these x's. And I want to see, is it the same as what I started with? Is it the exact opposite? Or is it nothing at all with what I did? I'm going to walk you through it. So you can be patient. Or if, you can, if you're feeling good, just 
Russ, you had a meet, that's okay. Okay. So um, x to the fourth, if I plug negative x in, x to the negative x to the fourth, will that be positive or negative? Positive. Any even exponent will always give you a positive number. So anything to the sixth will always be positive. Anything to the 20th will always be positive. If it's an even number, it will always be positive. So it will be positive x to the fourth. Is that the same as what we started with? Yes. yes. So that makes it even. Very good. Okay. Similarly for the next one, I've got negative x squared plus two all under a radical. What's negative x squared? x squared. So radical x squared plus two. I can't simplify it anymore. Is that the same or the absolute opposite of what we just had? It's the same, so that makes it even. We moving okay? Am I moving too slow, too fast? Okay for everybody? Good, no complaints? Okay, keep rolling. All right, the next one, same idea. I'm gonna plug in negative x for all my x's. So negative x, two times negative x to the third minus three times negative x. Negative x to the third goes positive or stays negative? negative? Goes negative, good. So I've got negative two x to the third and then negative three times negative x is, is plus three x. All right, my first question is, is this the exact same as what we started with? No. no. Is all, are all of the signs opposite of what they were? Yes. yes. That makes it odd. Next one says one over X. So I get to do one over negative X. There's not a lot I can do to simplify that. The only thing I might do is make it negative one over X. You can either move the negative up top or like put it like directly in the middle. It doesn't really matter. Um, is that the exact same as what we had before? Nope. Is it the exact opposite of what we had? Yep, it was positive, now it's negative, so it's going to be odd. All right, and then last one we're gonna try with this one. We're gonna put negative x's in for everything. So I've got negative, negative x squared plus 0 0.03 times negative x plus five. All right, negative x squared becomes positive, right? But I still have this pesky negative out front, so it will still be negative x squared. Are you okay with that, everybody? Okay, good. And then 0 0.03 times negative x will be minus 0 0.03x, and then my five doesn't change. Is this the exact same as what we started with? No. Is it the exact opposite of what we started with? No. Also no, it's neither. It's kind of a big deal to be symmetric. So oftentimes things are not symmetric and that's okay. So sometimes you're like, oh, well, we were supposed to know if it's even or odd. Ne neither or no is an okay answer in math. Not everything is fun and special and cool. Sometimes we just have a normal graph and it's not symmetric and that's okay. okay. Now, if you notice, the only thing that we're missing on this paper is number five. So we're gonna flip back to number five. So we still have a couple minutes. I also believe you might have done some of number five in algebra two. So you can tell me if I'm right or wrong momentarily. So the last thing in this chapter is finding domain, and it's finding domain um, algebraically. On a graph, you guys do a really good job of seeing like what is in the domain, what's not in the domain, but algebraically, we sometimes have to find it this way. Now, if it's something that's just like a normal function, x squared plus four, we don't have to overthink that. What would my domain for that be? Negative infinity to infinity. So if it is a normal linear graph, a quadratic, a cubic, um, like we can go look at our BFF graphs. Most of our graphs will have the domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, there are going to be two red flags that we need to look out for. They are going to cause issue. There are only two issues that we have to worry about when we're doing domain algebraically, at least in this class. 
The first one is a fraction. If you have a fraction, what is not allowed to happen? What can you not have? Zero on the bottom. Zero on the bottom, thank you. My denominator cannot equal zero. So we're gonna set our denominator not equal to zero, and we're gonna find out what number that is. There should only be one or two numbers. Everything else in the world is okay except for those one or two numbers. So if I look at letter B, I'm gonna set that not equal to zero. X minus three does not equal zero. So X cannot equal three. Now in algebra two, you might have been done at this point, but I really like interval, um, interval notation, so I'm really gonna push for interval notation. Now, you do not have to like these little number lines. I like them because I feel like I'm a pretty visual learner, but you do not have to do them just because I do. But what this says, x does not equal three, says that x could be anything smaller than three, x can be anything bigger than three, it cannot be three. So that means my domain here goes from negative infinity to three, bracket or parentheses, parentheses, and then from three to positive infinity. So we set our denominators equal to zero. If there's one number, we just exclude that one. If there's two or three numbers we exclude, we exclude those. Okay, let's go do, um, we'll do C and D really quick, and then we'll talk about the um, square roots on top. So C, I'm gonna set both of my denominators not equal to zero. X does not equal zero, and X minus three does not equal zero. So that means X cannot equal what two numbers? Zero and three. Zero and three. So I'm gonna go put those on my graph and I just cannot equal either of those. Open circle, open circle. I can't include any number in between zero and three. I can't include any number less than zero and I can't include any number bigger than three. I just cannot include zero or three. How many intervals are gonna be in my answer here? Three. Don't forget, the biggest mistake I see is we forget between zero and three. So remember that interval. So I'm gonna go, what's my first interval? Good. What's my second interval? Zero to three, what's my last one? Three to infinity. Again, I'm gonna tell you right now, most everybody, anytime that people have problems with this, they just forget the middle, middle interval. You have to include that those numbers are okay. Um, let's actually skip D, let's skip down to number letter E. I think that's an easier one to prove my point. Okay, let's do our um, denominator because we know the denominator is a red flag. So I have to set X minus two not equal to zero. So X does not equal two. Okay, before I do my domain, I have another red flag here. My other red flag is my um, square root, my radical. What is the deal with my radical? Does anyone remember like what needs to be true for a radical? Or maybe what can we not have under a radical? You can't have a negative, right? If you have a negative, what is that number? I, and I don't graph I's, right? We already talked about that. So if I have a radical, a square root, that whatever is inside the radical needs to be greater than or equal to zero. You're allowed to have zero in the radical. You just can't have anything smaller than zero. So I take whatever's under the radical. In this case, it's going to be x plus three. And I'm going to make that greater than or equal to zero. So minus three from both sides. x must be greater than or equal to negative three. So I care about, on this graph, I care about negative three and I care about two. Those are the only two numbers that things are happening now. So let's graph first, x is greater than or equal to negative three, okay? If x is greater than or equal to negative three, can I include negative three? Is that a closed or open yes. circle? Closed, good, and I want everything bigger than that, okay? 
Now I want to graph my x is not equal to 2, so I'm going to do an open circle at 2. It can be everything less, it can be everything greater. Now, I only want the ones where they overlap. So I only want negative 3 all the way up to 2, and then from 2 to infinity. We're going to have a kind of a break in our graph because we can't include 2. But I cannot include anything smaller than negative 3 either because it doesn't work for my radical. So it needs to go in both of my answers. So I'm going to write negative 3 comma 2 parentheses and I'm going to write parentheses 2 to infinity parentheses. Yes. That'd be greater than infinity. Great question. I know with a radical, it has to be bigger than or equal to zero. You cannot have a negative in there. So I've always said that greater than or equal to zero. Okay. I know I've pushed a lot today. We'll finish this, but you do have enough information to do your 1.2 homework for next class. Okay. Before you get all excited, where we are sitting for mass, did we go to mass already together? Yeah. We're doing the same thing. We're in that last row of seats on the like farthest gym side. Do you need me to show you a picture or do you remember? It's like if the altar is here, then we're like back row over here. I think we're second to last. I think Mrs. Wilson is behind us. Um, you can leave all your stuff. Please remember your lanyard. You guys are my example. So please be on your best behavior. Lanyards, leave your backpacks here. Stop that.